class this fall, um, so I'm, I'm sorry with the cohort who's on the finishing end of things. And my class is called Communication, Tourism, and Memory. Um, so I'm in the Communication Studies Department, and I think that we study in COM is uh, obviously public speaking and presentation skills. But then on the academic side, or like on the um, research side, we study public memory, alternative memory, critical memory, visual memory, things like that. So um, sort of the impetus for me doing this class is that I've been involved in developing and giving alternative campus tours over the past six or seven of my eight years on campus, along with some other colleagues in Palm who you may know, people like Hillary Green and um, folks like that on campus. So I would give these tours and I always thought it'd be interesting to uh, study it a little bit more rigorously and have the students be able to tell these stories as well. It's a little bit of a tense you know, topic sometimes. There's a little bit of politics around my class for sure, which is part of my um, reflection and work with the program. Um, but what I did in the fall, or this past fall, was give a, a small class. It was only four students. That's part of my takeaway questions, the scale we'll talk about. But uh, my four students, and so they studied both the academic framework of public memory, the rhetoric of space and place, um, what's history and what's memory of those events, right? How it's enacted in public forms like signs, statues, even websites, things like that digitally. Um, but we also had, um, we focused on UA history, right, focused on our campus here, and then we had putting it into action skills, obviously, with the theme of the ELO, and that was uh, an interesting spot for me, I'll, I'll talk about in my next slides, but the students built towards giving a simulated campus tour, and they ended up really focusing on kind of one area of campus, we didn't have enough um, time really to put together a comprehensive thing, but they focused on four different sites, one being this building, um, then the Graves McClure complex, where Authory Lucy was um, encountered violent mob violence during her time. Uh, the dorms on the north side of campus, Burke and Parham was one site, and then the Walk of Champions were my four students, and they were distinct, different ones. Um, it was it was really exciting. Have you been able to go on, a, on the snow day? They were amazing. Awesome. So the they last day, they did a dress rehearsal simulated tour with me um, on a Friday during our meeting time, and we kind of practiced, and they did it, you know, pretty full on, but then we had notes and critique. And then the final day, I had what I called safe strangers, right? Because I wanted them to feel kind of some fresh faces and some of the anxiety of that, but I wanted it to be fairly safe. So Heather was there. Um, did your um, Tony? I'm just going to explain it. Maybe Tony was there. Yeah, and Capstone Agency. And Paige Bolton from Crossroads, or yes. one of those two was there. Yes. Yes. There's folks like that that were going to be, you know, friendly faces, right? Um, and it was also the day it snowed, right? Mm -hmm. So it was this like persevering effort. I happened to be out of town for a family thing. Um, so things we did based on the uh, ELO. Um, outcomes, right? We did a lot of reflection work. We had an amazing conversation the first time we met about what is a campus tour, uh, what experiences do you have there. I asked them to write a reflection paper about their UA campus tour. Um, it was fascinating. One gal was from Tuscaloosa. She's like, I didn't take one. I've been on campus so much I knew it, right? Um, we talked about when should campus tours occur and when should an alternative tour occur. When in the student process, and there's a little bit of research around orientation tours and disorientation tours. What do we need to tell you to kind of assimilate you into a university experience, right? And then when are you ready to be a little bit, you know, unprogrammed? And then of course sign, and then of course the tours. So the reflection piece and then the doing part and the kind of observing um, was part of it as well. In terms of the problem solving theme, um, some of my problem solving goals were to have them get some access into primary research, so things that um, Karen talked about also. We also went to Cool. Um, I had four female students, three African American, and to see the, the group access the Manly Diaries and go through some of the acumen photos of Klan um, outfits on our campus was so powerful. And I, I was sort of standing at the end of the table watching these students who were just, I mean, they were just pouring over those documents, watching their relationships kind of play out as they flipped through this. And they just, and Kate Matheny, who's brilliant, just kind of opened the diary, didn't really direct them, and they just went flip, 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 and found a page where President Manley's like, I went to New Orleans and did this and this, and then I came home and took the wife to something, something, and then I bought Ben. And it was just there, very mundanely, in the diary, and they just were like, what is this, right? And let them kind of have that moment. Um, getting some skills of how to do that. Uh, this image here is a, a document that a housing staff member helped me find about the dedication of Mary Burke Hall. I'm looking into who these people are that they walk by all the time, or in this case, a student lived in that hall. And then the other part was the skill workshop. So I, I scheduled out three communication skill workshops. Um, I led one, a colleague of mine in public speaking led one. And we kind of, it was interesting for me to think about what do you need to know, right? Because most of them had had public speaking of some kind. And so we did a basic primer reminder of like, you know, stance and gesture and rate and volume and controlling verbal fillers and all the things you would cover in public speaking in the classroom. 
But then for me, thinking, what do they need to know to give a tour, right, help me reflect on when I give tours, right, what are the things that I work on and what are the moments that are unique. And so I came up with things about very much a narrative structure, right, I had them do, um, you know, their research on their sites, but then they have to tell it as a story, right, it's not just a boring read the history, everyone can find that if you work a little bit, but what's the story of the space? Uh, putting yourself in the narrative we talked a lot about, uh, three black female students, one white female student, myself as white female, um, in-state students, out-of-state students, different types of backgrounds. So where are you in this? How do you want to use yourself? How do we account for our race, class, gender, positionality of things, right? Faculty status, student status. That was pretty rich. And then we had a workshop all about handling tricky questions, right? So again, I worked with a colleague and I planted, I gave some tricky questions, right? So I planted the question of like the over-eager person who's like, we should change all the building names right now. The board of trustees are terrible. What are we going to do about it, right? How are you going to handle that kind of eager person, right? Then I planted <coughs> questions of the kind of skeptical, like, well, I don't know, right? This person was very important and we should keep their name on the buildings and this sounds like a lot of trouble, right? How are you going to handle some of those tricky moments? So this is a really live, unscripted thing, which is why, of course, the tours were simulated and not open to the public public. Um, so those workshops were a whole different type of speech training that I'd ever done and the students had ever done, um, and they were great. In terms of how the assessments helped, I think the, um, the <clears throat> making it an experiential class turned what I call the book report assignment into a tour script, and I'd let them write a script if that made them um, happier, they eventually spoke naturally. But the, the experience of seeing the students write up their research, what happened, when was the Ferguson built, who was Hill Ferguson, what did he do, and then having developed that into a story, was, was interesting and helped them think in a different way. We talked extensively about how to use their space. So the student who did Walk of Champions, um, we started on the bus kind of pull-in area so she could give kind of the general stadium and the start of UA football and things. We walked up the main plaques talking about that and she paused us in the middle and talked about the coaches statues, who they were, why, etc. Then we came to this kind of generic player statue which led to her to point to the other kind of plinth that sticks out sticks out, and is vacant. And she talked about the first black players and how we don't talk about those dates as much. And we mentioned the chimes with the hand and foot kind of cool but creepy sort of thing we do over there. Um, so how to use those spaces. That's something you can't do in an indoor speech with just a, a visual aid. Um, and I do think that they, you know, in, in my responses back to them, I try to give them empower their voices, ask for change as an activist, political sort of flavor of the class, but also the complexity of doing this and like seeing the Lucy Sign dedication event was helpful. There were some things at the ceremony that I didn't think were ideal, but then we would do the like, put yourself in their shoes, how do you plan something like this, how do you write the sign, there's only so many characters that can fit on it, what, you know, kind of some appreciation for the complexity of doing memory work, which I think is a nice kind of tempering thing. So looking forward, if I teach the class again, um, the students that I worked with were the student workers in our Intercultural Diversity Center, which is a space at Riverside Dorm um, that uh, the students advocated for in the fall of 2015. It opened January 16. And I did that on purpose. I wasn't ready to do it as a big public class based on who might enroll. I wanted kind of a targeted student group. So I'm not sure if I would broaden that or keep it with that. Um, the IDC and Dana Sample are very interested in me working with them and preparing those students to answer those questions or give kind of tours. But of course, there's some value to opening it up on what that would look like. Um, they did some independent work, some collective work. I, I want to kind of keep an eye on that balance there. Um, I could theme it right. We had students doing sports, housing, um, you know, civil rights history, kind of in the main sense of it. We could have other themes. We can move into community topics, right? That's an idea. And then the big question is, would they give those tours publicly? Are they prepared? Are they ready? Um, during Black History Month, I give my Authoring Lucy tour on Mondays. I'm going to invite my students to come with me and speak wherever they want, kind of along the way, <coughs> maybe on their site or chiming in. Um, I'm in meetings this week to see whether Dana thinks they can just offer the tours themselves, right? And whether between their preparedness and also the university politics around that. Um, the coolest wrinkle that I'll end with a little bit um, is that I had a, a student in the class who was also a capstone men and women tour guide. Um, and the theater major. She's fairly impressive and just can hold a room like there is nobody's business. And so she was really interesting to have in class because she knows the official tour <coughs> script, preparation, dynamics, all of that admissions office kind of dynamics. But she's a very much an activist student and was in our class as well. So we had a re that was a very much an enrichment that we could have to talk about those different voices. Um, she was really fun. So just a thought about campus and telling stories. Um, it, was a, it was a fun class. Thank you.
Um, I know it's it's still early, uh, but I mean, has the administration shown any interest in incorporating some of this other history right. into and the official a, tours? It's a good question, and I haven't. Um, I have stayed under the radar a little bit on purpose for that. Um, I know that, for instance, I know Jimmy Williams, assistant dean in arts and sciences, has arranged uh, kind of diversity themed or racial history themed tours. Um, my student Ambrose gave one of these to students from Central High School, um, so that's a fairly you know significant administrator. And so Capstone Men and Women, my understanding is that, that they're trained on a pretty broad history, and then there's like the official route we, we walk, and the students have some control over what they go to or not. So my student always walks by Foster and talks about what happened at Foster, but they're not required to. And she said there's very few white, especially white male students who go there, possibly out of a, their choice or their comfort. Um, so it's tricky, and I've thought, I've worked with Hillary Green and some other folks of whether we would want the administration to do the tour, or should it be an academic home? Should it be a student initiative? So we're kind of taking that very gently. Um, but I, yeah, it's always a good tour when someone asks me, are you going to get fired for doing this? But, so, <laughs> <laughs> that's my mark of a good tour. So. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. All right, so we have a couple people that need to go. And